Welcome to the Bentley Systems Training Course, where you will learn how to model structural members in the STAD Pro Physical Modeler using STAD Pro Connect Edition. In this particular video, we will focus on using some of the edit tools that are available in the model tab of the ribbon toolbar. This will include using the translational repeat command, the move command, the circular repeat command, and the mirror command. Now all of the tools available in the edit area of the model tab will require you to make a selection first. This is because you do have the option to either copy or edit your entire structure or just a portion of your structure. So let's go ahead and get started. And we're gonna start by using the mirror copy command. This is used to generate a mirrored copy of a selected portion of the model about a particular plane. Let's go ahead and start by creating our selection. And for this exercise, I'm gonna select my entire model geometry. Then I will go up to the model tab and the ribbon toolbar and click on the mirror icon. Within the mirror dialog, I have some options to go ahead and enter how I would like this to be mirrored. Now in the STAD Pro Physical Modeler, you do have the ability to create additional coordinate systems. I did not do that for this particular model, so we're keeping the default of the WCS, and we're going to mirror about a particular plane. Now my goal is to create a duplicate of the structure exactly mirrored about the center point of this truss. And for the way I have this model laid out, that would be the YZ plane. Then I have the option to either move or copy. Move means I will create the duplicate while basically deleting the original portion. And a copy means that I'm going to create that copy and retain the initial geometry. And I'm gonna go ahead and go with a copy. Next, I need to locate where my plane will be when I create this mirrored copy. Now, if I happen to know what the coordinate values are, I can go ahead and enter their global coordinate position and the X, Y, and Z. Or if there's a particular node that's at the location of my mirror plane, I can go ahead and select it and plan. So I'm gonna click on the select icon. The program's letting me know I'm in an active selection mode and I'll select the node that I want it to pick. Now, when you do that process, it'll automatically complete the X, Y, and Z coordinates. As always, with most dialogues in the STAD Pro Physical Modeler, you do have the ability to show the help directly within the dialog, which will give you more information about how to complete the inputs. In addition to that, in the STAD Pro Physical Modeler, several of these types of edit commands also allow you to preview what you're about to create. So let's go ahead and click on that. And what it's doing for me is it's confirming what's going to be created when I officially execute this command. Everything looks good to me, so I'm going to go ahead and click OK. Now what you've probably noticed is that I did have these center nodes and this vertical member selected when I created that mirror copy. So a logical question might be, did it duplicate those items? And STAD Pro Physical Modeler does understand that we're not looking to duplicate any members, so it did not create those. Now, if you'd like some additional verification to ensure that that was the case, we do provide an integrity check for the model, which will look for duplicate nodes and also duplicate or overlapping members. When activating this tool, we can click on the validate icon and look down in the output area. The output is reporting that we do not have any situations that are resulting in duplicate nodes or duplicate members so we can go ahead and delete this. Now, had that been encountered during this process, then it would have let us know and we would have had the option while the dialogue was still open to go ahead and delete the duplicate members. Let's go ahead and proceed. Now, the next thing I'm gonna do before I use any additional edit commands is I'm gonna go ahead and merge my bottom cord. My bottom cord for this particular truss is a flat member. I do want it to reflect the physical length of what I expect the bottom cord to be. So let's go ahead and do that quickly before moving on. I'm gonna hold down my control key 
and select both segments. Now, when you make an active selection in your view window, you will notice that there are some additional tools that will appear in the ribbon toolbar, depending upon what it is that you selected. I'm gonna go ahead and merge these two members into one. Uh, both these options will do the same thing. It won't actually delete this intermediate node because another member is connecting to that node. So I'll just go ahead and say merge members and keep the nodes. And you can see that one new member has been created. Now that we went over the mirror command, let's go ahead and take a look at copying the structure linearly, which will mean that we're going to activate the translational repeat command. This will be used to make a copy of a selected portion of the model along an axis. So let's start this command by making our selection. And again, I'm going to select my entire model. I'm gonna go up to the model tab in the ribbon toolbar and then click on translational repeat. Now I'm going to enter my appropriate information for this model, I'm going in the Z direction. And how many copies do I want to create? I'm gonna create two copies and I'm going to enter their spacing. Now this command will create all of those, will create those additional copies of the structure evenly spaced from each other. So I'll go ahead and enter a spacing of 30 feet and then I can enter my generation information. Now, do I wanna copy everything, just the geometry or just the geometry and properties? Now for this particular model, I don't have anything assigned to these members. They don't have any loads or properties or materials assigned. So any of these options would do the same thing. But if you'd like to use your translational repeat command a little later in your workflow, that additional information, if it were assigned to the copied members, is a candidate for being copied as well if you select those options through this dialog. The last area that we're gonna take a look at is whether or not you want to link your copies. What that will do is if the program detects a node in this trust, say for example, it will go ahead and create a member going between this node and the corresponding node of the copied structure. For this particular example, I don't want to do that. So I'm gonna go ahead and just click OK. Now it's gone ahead and created the copy of my structure. To see that effect a little bit more clearly, I think it might be better to switch to an isometric view at this point. Over in your view window, we do have several different perspectives that you can take a look at. And we do also have some similar tools available in the view tab of the ribbon toolbar. I'm gonna just come here and select the isometric view and I'll be able to see my structure. The next command we're gonna take a look at is the circular repeat command. This would be used to make a copy of a selected portion of the model in a cylindrical array. Now again, I'm gonna select the relevant members for this. And this time I'm gonna deselect everything. I'm gonna select my column and my top cord of this back truss here. Then I'm gonna go to the model tab of my ribbon toolbar and select circular repeat. My axis of rotation will be my vertical axis, which is the Y axis. And then I'm gonna enter the arc angle. I'm gonna go with 180 degrees. Now let's go ahead and talk about that arc angle. A positive arc angle will be a counterclockwise rotation, while a negative arc angle will be a clockwise rotation. The way I rem remember this myself is I go ahead and use my right hand rule, and whichever way my fingers want to curl would represent a positive angle. Next, I'm gonna enter the number of copies I would like to create, and again, everything will be evenly spaced. I'm going to enter my generation information, and this time I'm gonna go ahead and ask the program to link my copies for me. Now, when you ask the program to link your copies, you do have an option to go with an open base, which basically means that the node at the base of this column, would you like that connected to the adjacent column or not? Finally, let's go ahead and select our location. I'm gonna use this select icon and select the peak of my trust system. And again, the program will automatically populate the coordinate values. Now for this one, since this is a little bit more complicated than translational repeat, I am gonna go ahead and hit preview. Now everything in the view window does look good to me. So I'm gonna go ahead and click okay. 
Now again, the program does understand that I'm not looking to create duplicate members and you can see that the column and the top cord were not duplicated once it completed that 180 degree arc angle. Now the next command we're gonna take a look at is how to move a portion of the structure. For this, it'll be a little bit easier to go ahead and view an elevation. So let's go to the View tab of the Ribbon Toolbar, and I'm going to select the Left View icon. And what I'm wanting to do is I'm wanting to move the center truss. I do want to move it to the left by 5 feet. So I've gone ahead and selected that particular geometry that I want to move. I'm going to go to the Model tab in the Ribbon Toolbar, and then click on this Move icon. Now I can move it in any direction. Uh, here I'm going to choose to move it five feet. Now five feet happens to represent in the Z direction and I want it to go to the left, which is actually the direction of the negative global Z axis. So I'm gonna make sure I put a negative sign in there. Now retain connections, I'll go ahead and select that. Um, basically that means if there was anything else tied to those particular nodes as they moved would that geometry still be connected. I'll go ahead and say yes for that. Let's go ahead and click OK, and we can see that center truss was moved. Let's go ahead and do that again for this last truss over here. Here I've selected this truss. Let's go ahead and go to the Model tab and the Ribbon Toolbar. Click on the Move icon, and this time I want to go to the left 10 feet. Click OK, and then my truss was moved accordingly. Now the last tool I want to show you how to use is basically a generation tool, but it's available in the node tab of the ribbon toolbar. And what this tool will do is it's the member generation icon. This will be used to select a global direction for which you want to generate members between selected nodes. The members will be generated from each node to the last node in a line along a selected direction. So my option is I want my top cord to be connected to the top cord of the adjacent truss at each of those nodal locations. So to do that process, I'm gonna go ahead and select the nodes in the top cord of my center truss. Let's go to the node tab of the ribbon toolbar, and then we'll go to member generation. Now I'm going to generate my members in the positive Z direction. And you're going to see that the command can be successful because I do have nodes to stop that member generation um, at its finish point. Now my nodes are still selected for my center truss. If you wanted to verify that, you can reselect them if you'd like. I'll go back to my node tab in my ribbon toolbar, and this time I'm going to go in the negative Z direction. Again, it was successful because I do have nodes in an adjacent truss to stop those members. Now at this point, let's go ahead and save our model and return back to the isometric view. So throughout this video, we showed you how to generate model geometry using the edit commands in the model tab of the ribbon toolbar. Hopefully one of these commands will help you to generate your model geometry in a fast and accurate manner. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.